Hey guys, welcome to Algorithms Concord. I'm going to be doing something a little different today. This is not another tutorial. I'm going to be going over my competitive programming setup. So I'm not going to be showing you how to install everything that I have, but rather I'll be showing you what I have. I'll be leaving links down to everything in the description below. So if you see something you like, feel free to add it to your own setup. And as always, you can ask me questions about anything I show you in this video or anything else down in the comments below. So let's get right into it. So as my code editor, I use Microsoft Visual Studio Code and I'm very picky about the editor I use. So I've tried out C line and Sublime Text and I've probably tried out a few other things. And I've just found that I really like using VS Code. It works very smoothly. It has good extensions. So I've just been used. I've used I've been using VS Code for many months now. So how I set it up is um, essentially uh, the Extensions I use for competitive programming are these C++ extensions, which are sort of provided by default by VS Code for C++. And then I use this extension called Competitive Programming Helper, which is a very useful extension. I'll go into what it does in a bit. And the other two extensions I use are Snippet and Tab Out. So what Snippet does is I can basically save snippets of code to use anywhere in the programs that I'm writing. So these are all of the snippets I've currently made. And if I just go to my starting template snippet, it'll insert that code piece into whatever file I'm working on where my cursor is. And this is very useful because I can directly insert data structures when I'm coding. I don't have to go to my GitHub repository and do stuff from there. And I can also just add code using that extension into a snippet so i can create on click snippet after selecting some code i can give it a name and do things like that and then coming to tab out so the thing is when you're typing brackets or something like that you have to press the right arrow key to move out of the last bracket what tab out does is it lets me use the tab key instead of the right arrow key to move out so it's actually very difficult to repeatedly press the right arrow key um especially on my laptop because the right arrow key is very small so I can very easily just press the tab key using my pinky finger on my left hand. And it's very close to where my hand is positioned on a keyboard as well. So it makes my typing very fast. So it works for any kind of brackets. And I don't have to go and hit the right arrow key. So that's what those two extensions do. Let's move on to competitive programming helper. So this extension basically lets me add test cases inside VS Code itself. So these are all of the test cases. They have an input and what output they're expecting. I can run my test cases with a single button and it's going to check the output of my program against the expected output of all of those test cases. If it's right, it'll show me a past, which in green. And if it's wrong, so let me just print out every number plus one, which will give me a wrong output. It'll show me failed. Um, here we just printed minus one, which was over here. So it didn't reach here and which is still showing past. But that's essentially what I use this extension for. Um, it can do some other things like you can directly submit code from VS code to code force with the submit button. But to be safe, I usually don't do that. I've never done that before, but it is something that you can look at and you can probably check out the documentation for competitive programming helper and see what else it can do. So just still talking about this extension, suppose you're opening a problem page and you want to add all of its test cases inside VS code. You can use this Chrome extension called competitive companion. It'll, it'll just basically parse the problem and it'll create a new document for you to work in and it'll automatically import all of your test cases. So you can just write code and then press run test cases and it'll run against these set of test cases. So I think that's a very useful feature. You don't have to create files yourself. You can press a single button and just get the entire file ready made for you. And you can also set up a starting template. Whenever it creates a new file, it'll load up that template inside that file, which is over here. So I'll also talk about my template a little bit. Um, I just include all the header files straight up. I use this for debugging. So like, for example, if I have some variable n equal to five, I can say debug n and I'll run it and it's going to show me the error output. The good thing about this is I can define multiple variables and I can just add them all up over here. I don't have to 
So there is no limit on what all parameters I can put inside debug and it'll show them to me in a very nice format. So that's what these four lines do. Um, I've taken it from Neil's template, Neil the LGM on code forces. And then these are just two, these two lines essentially simplify doing this. So I can just do S max S10, which is equivalent to doing this if S is defined beforehand. And the same for min. And these lines basically generate random numbers for me. So you should look up Neil's blog on generating random numbers and why the rand function is bad. You should be using MT19937. I'll leave a link down to it in the description below. Apart from that, I have this macro defined for all. So I don't have to type in sort a dot begin a dot end. I can just do sort all of a. And it'll expand it to begin and end. And then size is just a macro for finding the size of a vector. It's yeah, it's just does that. Um, I also tend to use define int long long, which isn't a very good practice, but for competitive programming, it works very well, or it has for me at least. And then I define some constants so that I can just change their values whenever I'm solving problems. And then I have I define a separate solve function and I loop over the number of test cases I have. This is basically because if you look over here, um, if I if I couldn't find an answer, I had to, I had to print minus one. And I can then just print the, um, I can just print minus one and I can return. So if, if this was in a bunch of nested loops, then I could type in return without having to set a flag and then do break, break, break four times for a lot of nested loops. So that makes it very simple. If I have multiple test cases, I just remove the comment from this line, command shift and boom, I can go through every test case like that. All right, so that's essentially the editor I'm using and the extensions I have installed. I'll also go over to my compiler. So I'm using a MacBook Pro and basically Apple includes Apple Clang as their C++ compiler. And I don't like that because you don't get bits slash STDC or PBDS in that. PBDS is policy-based data structures. So I installed the GCC compiler using Homebrew. Again, I'll leave a link down to this in the description below. But essentially, this compiler has both bit slash STDC and PBDS. So if you're using a Mac, you should definitely consider installing this. Once you install it, it'll tell you where the compiler is located. So you just need to change your compiler path for that. And that is essentially my competitive programming setup. I don't have anything fancy. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. If there's something I left out that you want to know about, ask me in the comments below. I'll reply to you. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. Thanks.